my friends welcome back i'm hoping that everyone is doing well and today i just wanted to come on and chat a little bit it's been a while since i've been able to do that um just wanted to uh show you guys what i've been up to um so i just wanted to show you um some fabrics that i purchased um because i do have a journal that I am um, trying to start working on and this is for a collab um, with um, Dahlia from Mandali Cards and More and so um, I have to do a golden book journal um, and this is due in October and so I've been trying to gather pieces and things for this journal because honestly I don't have anything Halloween and it's supposed to be kind of like a um, Halloween slash Christmas because the um, golden book that she sent me is this one here um, the night before Christmas so um, definitely I can add the Halloween um, ephemera and things like that but of course Christmas too because it's both so Christmas I do have um, probably more things than I would have of Halloween and so I did take the book apart here um, I was working on some I try to save this part here um, so I just heat set it and it came out, but some of it got messed up over here. But I don't know if I'm going to add it to the book. I probably will. I'll probably add it to one of the pages and sew it on because I like to keep the original pieces of the book. So this was already a little bit broken, but I can fix that. So I think I'll add that. I'll just probably sew it onto one of the pages. Um, and then here I was just playing around yesterday doing some pumpkins because I figured I could probably use these as like little tuck spots. So I was playing with watercolor. And then I did this little house here too. And I could probably put that on one of the edges. Use it as a tuck spot. Right. Um so yes. So I took the book apart. And here are the pages. See, so it has Santa Claus, and so I can actually add Christmas items and Halloween items, or ephemera, things like that. I haven't even said I'm getting stressed out with this, but because I know myself. So then I also dyed some papers. Um, so this is just copy paper that I um, dyed. And so I wanted to do like some kind of black looking paper or like grayish looking paper. I don't know if the camera's picking it up. This light is so bright over here. I like the way this one came out. And this one, I think I used ink um, with black acrylic paint. I diluted it. So I used a combination of, I think I used spray paints. I used a few things to dye these papers. So this one came out really nice and it has some hints of purple there and then I did some green also with some hints of purple because what I did was as I was dyeing them I was laying them on top of each other because I really don't care like um you know I didn't care if the colors were gonna blend in or stuff like that and then look at this one here, just purple. So some of these came out really nice. Some of them are eh, but you know what, I'm gonna keep them in there. I really like the way these came out, like the dark ones. It's really grungy, and that's what I was aiming for. Look at the green ones here. So I was trying to get like, um, trying to do like Halloween colors, but also like the green. Christmas um, I may just switch these up I don't know if I'm gonna add every single one of them because 
as I go um, into the journal, not in depth into the journal. I'll probably switch things up, I'm not sure, but I wanted to have these papers ready. See how nice that is? Look at that. That is so cool. And that's the ink that gives it that effect. The only thing is that when you dye with ink, um, and you slide the paper in. So what I do is I get like a, you can get like one of those baking um, pans, um, fill it up with a little bit of water, and then I start adding like the ink. But once you, and what I try to do is I take the edge. I'll, sometimes I'll put my hands inside. I mean, your hands don't get so messed up. But anyway, um, as I'm putting in the paper, I'm sliding it out like that. Um, once the ink hits that first piece of the paper, it like grabs most of it, and so the end of it, um, by the time you reach the end of the paper, um, it's not grabbing a lot. So as you can see here, this is the beginning. It grabbed all of this, and then once it hits the ending, it like fades out. I mean, still looks really nice. It still has, but yeah, I struggle with that when it comes to, look at this part here, so nice. I'm trying to figure out a way that I can dye the papers in a way that it will grab most of it, but then I think it's what I'm using, like the inks and stuff like that, so yeah. I want to look into um, food dye and see. So this is another one here, purple, and so you guys get the idea. This one I try to do like a orange, but it came out, I don't know if it looks orange. Anyway. So yes, I have some greens. Look at this one. It has a combination of green with the purple. Really pretty. Yeah, so I'm going to try to use most of these. Of course, they'll be like decorated and things like that, you know. But I do have enough to work with. This one's really pretty too. Look at that green. It's like marble. Purple and again those blacks. I love those blacks, the grungy ones. So I have quite a few to work with. So what I wanted to show you guys is um some fabrics that I found on Etsy. And so look how cute these are. I don't remember. Um I think I bought this one and these this one together. And then this one I bought separate. And I don't remember the stores I got this one from. But I can definitely go back on my um, Etsy and see. So I found this one here. Look how pretty that is, right? And then this one here is really cute as well. Really pretty bright colors. That's pretty. It looks like watercolor. I love everything that looks like watercolor. And then this one here. This one I know where it came from because I kept the paper. And this one is coming from Fabric Utopia on Etsy. If you're interested, she has really nice selection of um, fabrics. Um, but, you know, everything has gone up. So even though this was $3.59, I did have to pay shipping, which is $5. So it came out almost to $9 that I paid for this piece. So... I don't know. That's a little pricey for me. But anyway. Um, look how cute. These are Nomi's. And so I figured that since um, I'm doing Halloween slash Christmas. I would somehow incorporate this into the journal. I'm not sure how. But I'll try and see how I can do it. But isn't that cute? This is the piece that I got. There. So I figured that because the cover of this golden book has uh, the main character, which is Jack Skeleton, I think his name is. I could be wrong. Let me see. What's his name? I think it's Jack. My daughter said his name is Jack Skeleton. Yeah. Jack Skeleton, because it has him up there, but then it has like the little pumpkins over here. I figured that this one here would go perfect with the... For the spine, see, it match perfectly. So I did create the spine for it here. 
Um, so I did this yesterday. I, I took a piece of cardboard, which is this right here, where I usually do my covers with when I do my own, my journal. So this is the journal. No, sorry. So this is the journal, the art journal that I created, and this is the cardboard that I use. I have tons of these that I get from work. So these are the ones that I usually use to make my um, covers. So I took a piece of that and I put some um, batting, and then of course I put the fabric on top and I um, glued it on with the beacon and poster board adhesive from the Dollar Tree which I love to use that um, and then I waited till it dried and then I did so the edges there to make it look neat and then so it's gonna go like this and of course my spine is not that big I don't do like a two inch because um, then I'm gonna feel forced to fill up the whole thing and make it really chunky which I feel like I think I did like one and a half maybe a little bit less than one and a half I never do more than that because like I mentioned a hundred times it takes me forever to work on my journals so yeah so this is the idea it's gonna go just like this so I'm gonna do this part here and then the second part, and look, it goes really nice with the cover. Yes. Okay, so as far as the rest of it, I'm, you know, thinking, thinking, thinking. Um, I don't know if I'm going to keep this here, even though I like the original look of the golden book. I just love it. So I don't know. I may just keep this. I'm not sure. We shall see, right? Um... Yeah, so I haven't started. I haven't started, so I definitely got to get into that. Um, what else? So I have these little pieces here that I'm going to probably add on there. I have my fabric pieces here. And I do need to look into more um, more things, like ephemera pieces and things like that, because I really don't have a lot at all especially Halloween I don't really celebrate Halloween so I don't really have a lot of Halloween things so let's see so I also wanted to show you guys that I was thinking of just probably going online and getting some printables you know because I feel like um, I don't want to spend a whole bunch of money like buying Halloween things and stuff like that uh, probably I can make some myself but I feel like I would probably have to buy a few things anyway. But anyway, I found these printables on Etsy. That you can, um, I thought this one was cute. You can make like little dolls. And so this was a smaller print, but I did print them out in bigger. This is what it looks like. My fan is on. Just put this. These are cute. see that so I thought of maybe getting some digitals and doing that the only thing with digitals is that I have to put these through my machine or I may have to fussy cut some so that's one and then there's this one here but of course these are really large so they're probably gonna be too big for the journal so that's why I also printed them out smaller because I can probably add one of these cute characters, build them up really cute, and add it to the journal. Um, so that's one, and this is another one. If you're interested um, to know the name, I can definitely let you know. This one, so this is just copy paper, and then over here I printed it out on a cardstock. And then I printed it on this type of like that cream color, which looks really nice. So, got that. And then here I have some printables. So these I'm not crazy about. So I don't know if I'm going to use this. This is like a skeleton. Maybe I'll put it in there. 
And this was like a whole theme, but I didn't like the rest of the papers. They were a little too dark for me. So maybe. But then I saw these, which I had a while. I had um purchased these. I totally forgot to download them. But they are, I had them in my account. And I thought that I could probably add these doors are gorgeous. Some of these doors, even though they don't really, they're not really like um Halloween or Christmas. I can probably add like a little pumpkin or something to it. Look how beautiful it is. This is just copy paper I printed it out on. But I'm definitely going to be using some of these for my mixed media. Shrink them down a little bit. Look how beautiful. I love doors. That's gorgeous. Look at this one. Um, let's see what else. Then I found these ladies here. These vintage ladies. Which I thought was super cute. Um, and I could probably just cut them out and use them too. And this is coming from Lisa's Altered Art.com on Etsy if you're interested. If this was just a dollar. Then I have these here. Um, these images that put together got some nomies there look how cute this one is a little i'm gonna cut those out here i thought about making a belly band maybe cutting that out doing a belly band um cutting them out and maybe do like a tuck spot or something this one too i have some um sayings there don't make me flip my witch switch <laughs> And it says can't countdown days till Halloween. But look at that mommy, how cute is he? Super cute. So those are the few images that I may use. Add them to the journal, make it fun. And then I found her. I forget what her name is. So I found her. And I found these images on Pinterest. And so I'm thinking that maybe I could add her like that. Maybe cut her out, and then I found this one too. That I can probably use, make it into a belly band or something else. A card. Then I found some of the other characters. So this one is on cardstock, that one was on copy paper. And then I found some more. So I'm gonna play around with these and see what I come up with. And then this one I printed it on the cream colored cardstock. So with these I thought about making like just um, note cards and stuff like that. Yeah. So I definitely need more images of course. But as I um, you know, start building the journal a bit more, I will probably get an idea of what I need. <coughs> So let's see. I do know that I was thinking of going into AliExpress because I think that AliExpress, I think I was watching, I think I went through AliExpress earlier a few weeks ago and I think that I put some stuff in my cart and there's a lot of um, the night before Christmas items there. So most likely I will probably um, put an order for AliExpress. And see if I can get like some charms and things like that. Yeah, so that is what I'm thinking when it comes to this journal. I actually had another journal that I was supposed to be making for my niece. Which guys, honestly, I'm not going to be able to do it because I just got so much things that I have to do. And oh, it's just, just work doesn't let me. You know, it's mainly work. Work doesn't let me um, have the time to do all these things. You know, I there's so many challenges going on that I feel bad because I'm not participating in. Or I'm, I don't have the time to actually, you know, be a part of. And I feel bad because, you know, a lot of the ladies have supported me. And so I can't join a lot of the challenges because I just don't want to fail in that sense. You know, if I commit myself, I'd rather do it. Um, so what I do is I'll take one challenge sporadically and join and 
that's all I can do. But as far as my niece, what I was thinking of doing for her is, I'm going to put a picture on the screen. Um, I was thinking of getting her one of these journals and then um, just tweaking it a little bit. Uh, because the thing with her too is that she, well, it's my older niece and my younger niece. So my older niece, which is the one in charge of, you know, setting up her party and things like that. Uh, and the theme, uh, she tells me that she wants a fairy forest type of theme. And then, um, so she showed me something more or less that she wanted, which had like a lot of green, a lot of green and a lot of like browns, which I thought was really pretty. But then I feel like during her, um, you know, organizing and trying to put the things together for the, for her party, she has like a beautiful blue dress or she hasn't gotten the dress yet, but that's what she has in mind. Like a beautiful blue, like a beautiful gown. That's blue. So I'm not, I'm not sure exactly what it is that she wants. And I don't want to get her a book that's not going to like match the theme. So, um, as far as I know, it's going to be forest fairy type of thing. So what I thought was, um, that picture that I just showed something like that um i just got to figure out what color to get it and then i was thinking about tweaking it a little bit and i thought the one with the tree was goes with the theme because i also ordered um you know the book ends the um the really pretty metal book corners i ordered some of those and i could probably add those to this book the leather book and then in the inside i was gonna like uh you know like make the pages pretty and add to the pages and things like that so we'll see that was my thought behind that oh, we'll see because honestly i do want to make something pretty for her but i'm not going to have the time to do what i really want for her so yeah so that's that um what else did i want to show you guys so oh so talking about her um journal um i had originally ordered these here which i really love and these are like these pattern um i don't know they feel like fabric on this part here but they're kind of like leather like uh faux leather and i was thinking of doing something like this color for her that's such a pretty like a moss green but um also, I was thinking, uh, once I order that book for her, maybe I can add like something like this to it. But I don't know, because if I'm going to get the one with the tree, it already has the tree on it. I don't know. I'll see. Maybe I'll put like a little pocket in the inside. I guess I'll see, because I don't know if the green is going to match. If I get green. So this is, I like these. So I don't know what I'm going to do with these now, but I feel like for a journal, they're too small. See? I mean, you can probably do a pretty cover, but I don't know if I want to use like the whole thing for a journal. I would, I would use like, so my idea was doing like a window and then just leaving like the frame, right? Or even like the corners. So yeah, I don't know. This is really pretty. I love this. And the colors, I love the colors of this pack. So this one's like the moss green. This one is like a really pretty cream color. And then this one is like a rosy color. So pretty. And another thing that I thought that you can do is if you take your stamp, your um, ink pad stamp, like one of these, of course, this would be too dark, but if you get something that's like a lighter and you pass it over, it would give it like a really pretty color. Maybe you can like go over with a um, wipey. I don't know. I mean, it's just coin guys. That's pretty. Look at this yellow. Oh my goodness. This is so pretty. See that? That's gorgeous. All of these colors are gorgeous. Look at this brown. It's like that rich vintage brown. 
so pretty and look at this burgundy oh my goodness it's so pretty and this beautiful gray here love this whole combination of colors in this set so now i don't really know what i'm going to use this for but i will definitely figure it out i just wanted to share that with you guys and i think this pack was like 12 dollars on amazon yeah i think it was around there i don't think it was more than that it could be um, to, from 10 to 12 dollars i could say because i'm always looking for the cheapest price on everything so that's that um Then something else that I wanted to talk to you guys about is I purchased this. Um, oh, and here I have like some papers that I found, like little six by six cardstock papers with like Halloween. This is the extent of what I have, guys, when it comes to cardstock. So, yeah, I don't have anything Halloween. But I figured I could use these to do like little pockets and things like that. Keep everything together there. Um, so I bought myself a jewel picker. And the reason, I don't really have like jewels like that. But the reason why I bought this is because I saw, I was, okay, so let me just start from the beginning. I wanted to um, clean my scan and cut mat. Because I'll be honest with you, I like the Scan and Cut. Um, I had the first Scan and Cut years ago when it came out. I sold it. Because I was a little bit disappointed with it. Because it was just, um, I could only scan black and then the scanner wasn't great. It, it wasn't picking up anything. So after a while I got frustrated and I just sold it. Of course, um, I think when I bought it, it was... The, you know one of the first models that came out and I think it was like four hundred dollars at that time four hundred or three hundred one of those but that was a lot that was a lot of money for me and um when I sold it I sold it for a hundred and eighty dollars which I lost money but I did use it like for a year and a half or stuff like that and then I got frustrated and I was like you know what? I'm not gonna use it anymore so Anyway, so two years ago, my husband uh, gifted me the more updated, the new uh, scanning cut for Mother's Days. And um, so I like that one better. I mean, because now it scans color and it picks up the black a lot better. Um, of course, the machine is not perfect. I had like a love and hate relationship with it, but just recently oh another thing is the mats are not great for a machine that costs so much money the mats need to be improved and everybody says that about the scanning cut those mats the quality is very low like the, they don't stick i don't know i'm just not happy with the mats but anyway um so the mat that i have i was trying to clean it because I noticed that every time I cut something, my machine was like dragging the paper. And I was, oh my God, so frustrating because it's breaking all your pieces. And so I said, you know what, let me clean the mat. So I go on YouTube, of course, trying to figure out there's tons of videos that you can go on that shows you how to clean your mat. So they say, oh, you can use soap and water. So I used um, less oil, which is my go-to all the time. A little bit of less oil. I took one of those um, sponges that have the rough side but it's not really rough and you just slowly with warm water you clean your mat so i cleaned my mat so i was trying to make it sticky again i mean and, it, and when you clean it and you dry it up it does become a little bit sticky but not sticky enough so i go on youtube to see if there's a way that i can there's a lot of people that use certain adhesives to make it sticky so i did that i'm that means that I would have to go on Amazon or somewhere else and buy this certain adhesive to make my mask sticker, which I'm like, I'm not doing that. So, anyway, I mean, I still had to do it, but I didn't buy the one that you spread and you got to wait till it dries, whatever. So, I go into YouTube and I found um, a lady who said, you know, don't go, don't bother buying all those adhesives. You got to put it all over your mat. You got to wait till it dries. Yada, 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 yada. So she said what she does is 
she buys this, the Aline's Tacky Spray. Um, and she puts it on her paper instead of putting it on the mat. So in other words, she, if this is the paper she wants to cut out, she'll just spray it in the back and put it on the mat. And that's it, cut out her paper. And she said she hasn't had any issues. And that was like the best thing that works for her. So I was like, you know what, that's easy. So I'm going to try it. So I bought it. Um, I think this was, I want to say like $6 on Amazon. It brings a lot. It's going to last you a long time. Um, I did try it and I liked it. The problem is that, um, you do have to use this in a ventilated area because the smell is very strong. So I did spray a little bit and it was all over my house. My husband was what are, you, what are you spraying? It's so strong. And my daughter didn't like the smell, so I'm not doing it in the house anymore. Um, so yeah, this works, but go outside, spray your paper, then come back in because, you know, this is not good to smell. But it works. So um, her channel is, I think it's the Inky Papers. Inky Papers. I don't think it's that Inky Papers. I think it's Inky Papers. I could be wrong, but it's one of those the inky papers or the inky papers. She does, she gives you a lot of good tips. I think she also has the cricket, um, which I have the cricket as well. I have the first cricket, I mean, the cricket air. I mean, so many okay, so let me go back. So many, 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 many years back when the cricket started making their machines, the one that had the cartridge, I still had that machine, guys. I still had it. I still have it and I almost threw it out but I say you know what I can't I just can't throw it out. I know it's old and it's outdated and I don't even know if you can find the cartridges anymore but I think I had bought two cartridges and I think that machine cost me that was way back guys I'm talking about probably this is even before I had my daughter my daughter's 14 probably like 20 years um yeah so um, I have that Cricut and then years later I bought the Cricut Air. It's not the one from now. The one from now of course is more updated and it's new. Um, so I just have the Cricut Air and I haven't used that machine in ages guys. Ages. So if I start using it I probably have to get a new blade. Yeah. But it's still a good machine still in very good condition so I'm definitely not getting rid of it but I do have to make use of it I do use a scanning cut more and then again I have an issue with space if I would have more space I would have both machines out where I can just rotate and use them both but wait, nope that's not possible right now yeah so I just wanted to let you guys know if you guys have a machine um, and this also works with the Cricut and the scanning cut anyone that have those type of mats this works with so if you want to check out her video or her channel, I can link that down below so you can actually go and check her out and find her. So, talking about her, what she, the reason why I got this, the jewel pick, is because she was also, while she was showing how to use the spray with her papers, and she was just showing an example of how to cut, she was using one of these to touch screen the actual... You know, machines like when you're going to put, uh, when you're going to choose to cut and things like that. She was using a jewel picker, a jewel, jewel picker. And she was saying that she doesn't use the little um, pencil that comes with the machine. That she uses this and she touches the screen and it's so much easier. So I was like, you know what, I'm going to get one of those. I mean, I could actually touch the screen with my fingers, but that's cool that she was using that. So, and maybe I could use it for my jewels too, right? This is probably like five dollars on Amazon. It was cheap. Yeah, guys. So that's interesting stuff. So um, I just wanted to also show you guys that I'm trying to collect my die cut pieces. Um, that's another thing that I don't have a lot of. Um, I don't own like a big shower or anything like that. What I still have is that I bought ages ago. Is my Cricut. Um, what do they call it? Cuddle bug. The cuddle bug? Is it the cricket cuddle bug? Guys, I still have that. Yes, I do. And that is what I use. 
because it's small um, it doesn't take up space let me just show you all right guys so this is what I have uh, it works fine I mean I don't feel the need to get a big one this is what I have this is what I use to cut my um, my die cuts it is small I mean if you have bigger dies of course and these are my um, I forget what you call it that goes with it um, and then I have a few die cuts over here this is the extent of my die cuts they all fit in this bag I don't have them in any particular order. I just put all my die cuts in one thing. Here are the bigger dies. And that's it, guys. That's the extent of my dies. And so, um, but I am trying to collect. I wanted to have to cut some of these out. And these I probably won't cut out, but these are alphas. These are good to cut out and have them. These are like the little um, Christmas. Not necessarily for Christmas, but it has like all the leaves. I don't remember why I ordered these. This is a uh, honeycomb. These I got from In Love Arts when I did a collaboration with them. And these I got in a bee stash. This I was thinking of cutting out, but I don't even know because, yeah, I could probably cut them out. I could do like a book. Anyway. Um. So I wanted to cut these out, cut some of these out, and then I wanted to, you know, like collect more die cuts, even if it's just the paper. And so I created this here. Let me get these out of the way. So I created this, and this was something that I did really fast because um, I just want to share it with you guys. Um, I had these um, protector sheets, like the um, page protector sheets, that I, they were all cut like this already. So I was like, because I think at one point I was doing, um, I was doing these type of, uh, like uh, ephemera storage, like this. I was cutting them, right? And I was um, adhering them. And that's how I was saving my ephemera pieces, right? So, I have a few of these books. Um, I don't know what I was looking for, but anyway, I found them. And I was like, why are these all cut this way? And then I realized, oh, I remember I probably started cutting them because I wanted to do those type of books. But after a while, I get tired of doing them. You know, I did so many. I probably have like five of those books there. And then I do a lot of sewing when I do these. So I found them and I said, you know what, I'm not, I'm not going to throw them out because that's like wasteful. So I decided to do a book for my little um, die cut pieces. So I put them together. I did sew some pockets. Some of them have pockets for the smaller pieces. So what I usually do is put like a paper in between so I can have not only these two pockets, but I can have these two pockets as well. So I have four pockets on one page and then these are for the smaller pieces so here I have some die cuts and hearts and these are ones that I cut out a long time ago there's there some of these and then everything else is empty and I just use whatever paper nothing fancy and then these right here are for the larger pieces so it's just one pocket in the front and one pocket at the back and then over here they're sewn so this is not gonna move yeah guys so that is what I do sometimes when I'm not crafting like recording I'll just like play around with different things and try to recycle things and then here we have some pieces in the back and that's it. And then I just, of course, I don't like any plain um, books. This one right here that I just created yesterday, I am definitely going to do something on the cover. This is my new art, um, one of my new art books, journals. And um, of 
course, you guys know I did this yesterday, so I'm definitely going to cover this book up, but I don't know. Right now, I can't think of anything. I'll do that eventually. I don't like to leave my books just empty like that with the covers. So all I did here was um, use the napkin. I just saw the paper so that the napkin comes out brighter. Um, and I just used the napkin. Look how pretty that is. It looks pretty vintage. I did it on the other side as well. And then I put this flap here because... In my experience, all the books that I create that have pockets like this, if you don't store them right or if you just like mishandle it, everything slips out. So I just put that little flap there and I just um, binded it with thread there and it's stuck there. It's not going to come out. Um, so yeah, so I'll just put it, for now I just have a little rubber band on it because um, I don't even know what to do with it right now. Let me get it. So for now, I just did, um, I'll just put a rubber band on it and then maybe I'll do like some belt or something. But yeah, I just wanted to share that with you guys. Simple storage. And of course, this doesn't have to be for die cuts. This could be for anything. I stem up pieces and things like that, you know. But I have tons of books for stem up. And what I do is I divide them. Like, let's say, if I have printable ephemeras, I'll have a book just for printable ephemeras. And if I have um, Etsy um, printable ones, I'll just have a book for Etsy. If I have... Um... So I'll divide it like that. That way I'll know. And so this one right here was one of my original... Um, ephemera holders and this is really chunky so here I have a whole mixture of things and what I did here of course I used the page protector I put the page in so I used like a lot of cardstock not cardstock I'm sorry scrapbooking paper and I just divided it into four and then I cut like little pockets into it and you can see the tabs here so you can see where the pockets go and I just add whatever so these are for the smaller pieces you see so I have tons of space. I still have empty pockets. Um, here you go, two more empty pockets. There are a lot of empty pockets, you see, that I can still use. And then I made some like this, longer pieces, like that. And then I made the bigger pieces. And then I have some regular pages where I just add those. And then I have for the tiny, tiny stickers, these. These, these are the, what do you call these? The card. The playing card ones, not the playing cards, the baseball cards collecting pages. Yeah. So this one is totally empty, but I just put like a little washi tape there so you can see where the entrance is because you kind of you kind of kind of lose it. Yeah. So this one has a whole mixture of things, but I do try to separate most of my ephemera so that I can. Um, find it yeah. and then I just use of course the this is the three inch binder um, cover because I don't like hard cover so I always use the yeah so that's that um, so yeah that's pretty much it guys so but I just wanted to show you guys this one here um, so if you want something small, and then, you know what I found recently that I made, what is it? Let me see if I can find it. What did I do with it? I just had it here. Oh, this I made, I don't even remember when I made this, but kind of similar. And it's coming apart because the, the tape is old already. That's how long it's been, so... I made something like this. I used to make stuff like this. I used to play around always looking to make storage. And so what I did was I just put some, one of those, uh, the yellow envelopes, the large ones. I folded them together. So I made one, two, three, four. So this is four big envelopes. And I folded them together and I just made this. And I was going to get rid of it. I was just going to throw it out because I was like just... You know, taking out things that I haven't used in years. But you know what? I figured, you know what? Let me just keep it just in case. And I added like this little key there. And I added like this. 
before I actually added the envelopes, I added this first. And then this is just some art that I did on that parchment paper that I love. But I figured I could probably use this. So what I did was I just stapled it because it's, you can see that it's been so many years that the adhesive kind of like came out. But it still works. So I can probably just put things in here. There's something in here already. I'm not going to throw it out. I'm going to keep it. And I'll keep it with this. If I need to get storage for something else, I have it. Yeah, guys, so that is that. That is what I wanted to share with you guys and chat a little bit and let you know what I've been in up to. Um, so that is pretty much it. I just wanted to also mention that if you guys know of any nice um, scrapbooking paper, like Halloween scrapbooking paper, or nice Halloween ephemera, so let me know, please. And you can send it to the comment, or you can email me, because I'm just, I don't know what to look, honestly. Um, so, I also wanted to take the opportunity to shout out um, Denise Garcia. Uh, she has been sharing, we've been in contact with email, and she has been sharing her process um, on how she makes her journals. So she was one of the winners of my birthday challenge and she received one of my um, junk journal sewing kits. And so I did mention, you know, if any of you make, actually make the journal out of the sewing kits, I would love to see how it looks and stuff like that. So she started working on her journal. Um, the one that I sent her was the beautiful butterfly one, which is one of the really, really pretty um, fabrics. And so she made her junk journal out of the butterfly one. So, so pretty. And so she sent me the images through email and I told her that I would love to show her um, process and um, her beautiful journal because she doesn't do videos. And so she is a big supporter of a lot of us. Denise Garcia. You guys will see her in the comments all the time. She supports a lot of us. I know she supports me a lot. She's very sweet. And so I wanted to do that for her. I want um, for everyone to see her beautiful journal that she made out of my uh, junk journal sewing kit. But also there's another journal that she made for a friend um, that... I also wanted to show you guys so you can see the process of her beautiful journals because she doesn't do videos so you wouldn't be able to see them. So um, I did ask her permission and she said, absolutely, that's fine, you know. So yeah, I wanted to do that for her. So um, towards the ending of this video, I am going to show a slide of her beautiful journals. Um, and so yeah, guys, I hope you guys enjoy. And if you see her commenting, you know, just shout out to her say hi you know and anything you want to say about her journals and things like that i'm not sure if she is i did send her a message asking her if um if she would take quarters because her journals are gorgeous um if she would take journal uh, if she would take quarters you know for journals because sometimes people want to do like custom journals so um I don't know if she, I sent her this, um, this question just this morning, so I don't know if she got a chance to answer me, so I'm just going to take a moment to look at my phone and see if she did. Um, so, let me see. Yeah, so I'm looking at my phone right now. So yeah, um, I wanted to know if she would take orders and if she would, um, you know, share her email.
Okay, so um, she just read her email. Uh, she says right now it's not a good time. Um, Okay, so um, I just read her email. Um, so she is not um, going to be able to take any orders at this time, but she is really excited about the idea. So, um, you know, she, we all have our lives and things keep us really busy and some things take priority. So um, she did say to mention it to her again in January and maybe she'll be able to do that. But I'm going to give you guys a chance to look at her journals. You can comment. I mean, you know, I'll bring it up again if there's something that she wants to do because I do want to help her out, you know. And um, she does do beautiful journals, which you're going to see. So, um, yeah. Denise, this is for you. Um, you know, if you decide, no rush, no pressure, my friend. Um... I'm pretty sure that you'll have um, a lot of the ladies will be interested in purchasing one of your journals if that is something that you would like to do in the near future. So anyway, guys, I thank you so much for joining me. Um, comments and any questions, of course, you know, you can put them down in the box. And I think that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you guys have a beautiful week. And I will see you guys on the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.